Give thanks to God for he is good, his love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, that he redeemed those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Let's bow down his prayer. Almighty and gracious, <coughs> loving Heavenly Father, we worship you, we praise you, and we glorify you, Holy Name, Lord, for thou art worthy, worthy to receive all praise, glory, and honor. And Lord, we pray this time that this time will be a blessed time for us, even as we lift up your name, O Father. Pray, O Lord, that you will keep away all distractions, God, and help us to concentrate on you and glorify your name. Towards this end, Master, we just commit ourselves in thy almighty arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue worshipping the Lord by turning in our song books at this time to song number 666. Song number 666. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care. We rise to our feet and join in this beautiful song. <coughs> sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and all has gained the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of Thy wing shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, Responsibly, I'll read one part of the verse, you can respond with the next. Psalms 121 I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. 
The Lord is your shield at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day. Nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going. Both now and Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Even as we come in the presence of the Lord, we are in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is seated upon our praises this morning. Let's take this time to let's worship the Lord by thanking Him, praising Him. As the psalmist says, praise Him from your inmost being, from the depths of your heart. forgetting not any of the benefits that he has given us as a member of god as a god who provides he has provided our needs our physical needs food shelter clothing He has given us safety. The word of God says that He is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in trouble. He is the one who keeps His angels around us all the time, guiding us, guarding us. Just tell the Lord in your hearts, "Thank you, Lord." Thank the Lord for the jobs that He has given us, the work that He has given us, whether the work of ministry, work of in any secular space, in the marketplace. Thank God for our families. Thank God for our children, our wives, and husbands, our spouses. Thank God for the houses that He has given us, homes that He has given us. Thank God for the neighbors. Thank God for the society that we live in. Thank God for all the facilities, like the conveyance He has given us, our cars and motorcycles, scooters. Yes, all this is the grace of God. Thank God for the good health He has given us. In spite of all the pains and aches that one may have physically, nevertheless, He has given us enough enough strength to go through the day. He gives us a good night rest. and we can sleep well because he does not sleep even as we read from psalm 121 he is a god who neither slumbers nor sleeps he will not let the sun harm you by day or nor the moon by night the god of israel our god is a good god 
even as we read right in the beginning psalm 107 his goodness endures forever and for all these physical blessings are not enough he has bestowed us with innumerable spiritual blessings countless spiritual blessings spiritual blessings which are beyond our imagination because he has called us from death to life he has called us from eternal damnation to eternal life he has called us from the world to be part of his family to be part of his kingdom he has made us his sons and daughters forgiven us our sins washed them away redeemed us from the power of sin and all this he has done through grace he has lavished his grace upon us as john says grace upon grace is what he has given us his grace which will never run out take this time to say thank you lord just thank you lord and if all these things are not enough he has given us his holy spirit holy spirit god we worship you we thank you we praise you lord jesus we thank you and praise you for what you have done for us on the cross thank you father for this plan of salvation which you have ordained even before the foundation of the world thank you lord for your goodness and mercy in our lives and in spite of all these blessings we know that we are still sinful though we are on the path of uh, going towards perfection we are not perfect yet and we need god's grace to overcome sin in our lives <coughs> it's time to check our own lives where are we with respect to what god wants us to be what god is trying to make us if you have had doubts about god's love for us god's sovereignty this is the time to say sorry lord if you have sinned against him in thought or in deed giving into the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life this is the time to say sorry lord lord please forgive me each one of us would have realized so difficult to live the life that god wants us to live and yet we know it's in the power of the spirit only that it is possible ask god for his grace god ask god for his strength at this time god cleanse my thought life and change it to must Paul tells us is by the transformation of the mind that we can worship the Lord. And he goes on to tell us think of all those things which are noble and good and beautiful and not the things of the world. So that our mind can be purified. ask god to do it help god to do it in your own lives without your help he does nothing yes father lord we thank and praise you for this time god that we took to remember your blessings in our life thank you that we took this time god to check our own selves and lord we pray that you may continue your work in our lives change us from within so that the work you're doing oh lord of transforming us into the image of your son jesus christ may continue master 
and your name be glorified in and through our lives. We commit ourselves a master in thy almighty arms. We ask this all in the most blessed name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, this is the time that we read uh, scripture. Okay, and uh, scripture reading, the first one, uh, I'll request Mona to lead us in this reading. Genesis chapter <coughs> 32 and verses 22 to 31. Genesis 32 verses 22 to 31. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 20, uh, 31. Jacob wrestles with God. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jobak. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched and he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let's go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. This is the word of God. All right, the uh, second reading is taken from uh, Second Timothy. And chapter 3, verse 14, to chapter 4, verse 5. In the New Testament, we turn to 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 14, chapter 4, verse 5. And it reads, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God breathed and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom. I give you this charge, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what the reaching ears want to hear. They will turn their years from the truth and turn aside to myths but you keep your head in all situations and your hardships do the work of an evangelist discharge all the duties of your ministry may the lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his holy word Even as we sing this song, <coughs> let us just praise and worship the name of Allah. Karte hai teri ham suti, Nive ki gehra Oh, yeah. 
song says, <clears throat> what can I give, what can I bring that would be pleasing to my king? He has given us this body, he has given us two hands, one heart, one life and that is all what we can offer him. <clears throat> we are nothing and he is everything. So even as we sing this song, let us understand <clears throat> and let us tell that Lord I bring unto you my heart, I bring unto you my life. What can I give? What can I bring? That would be pleasing to my King. I'll give my heart, not just a part. I'm lifting up my everything. That it's all I have to all. Oh, 
even as we sing the last song <coughs> let us understand that he has fought the war and he has won the battle love has won death has lost and our souls have been bought he has paid the price so let us thank the lord for that that you went up to the hill of calvary and you went courageously Almighty and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we continue to be in Thy presence, and Father, we bring the world to You, O Master, with all its issues and problems, especially, O Lord, the places where people are in unrest because of war, because of terrorism, because of natural disasters, earthquakes, floods, because of Pandemic, so master. Yes, Lord, for all the places where people are suffering, we pray, O oh Lord, for each one of them, each of those countries, each of those cities, O oh master, which are devastated because of various reasons. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will reach out to all such people and take care of their needs. Uphold them in their mighty arms. Yes, Father Lord, we Pray, Master Lord, especially for uh, the Ukraine and Russian war, Master. You know, it doesn't seem to be stopping. And Lord, we just pray that you not escalate into many other countries getting involved. And Father Lord, uh, it going out of hand. Father, we just commit them to Thy Almighty arms, the leaders, Lord, in Thy arms, Father. Pray that we give them good sense of Father. 
Pray, Master Lord, for our own country that you will bless it, O Father, with all its issues and problems that it has, so much of hatred that we see among people for each other, based on their own perception, Lord, of uh, religion, caste, creed. Pray that you will break that, the polarization that has taken place in the past uh, two decades, O Master. Very sharp it is, Lord. We pray that you will break that, O Master, and bring people together, helping them to be one, O Father. Father, Lord, we you know that uh, real oneness can only be won through our Lord Jesus Christ because He has taken all the divisions, all the causes of divisions on Himself on the cross, and He has made us one. The Jews and Gentiles, even as uh, the word says, there are no Greeks, there are no Romans, there, are, there is no man, no woman. Everyone is equal before you. Yes, Lord, we pray that the gospel may go out very powerfully in this uh, country of ours, which is so divided, so that a unity may be found of us, Lord, in and through you, in our country. Father, Lord, we pray that this unity may be seen in the, among the Christian community, among your people, divided must along uh, denominational lines, doctrinal lines. Father, help every denomination to know whatever their distinctiveness is a master lord what binds us together is the atoning death of our lord jesus christ if you believe a lord in the triune god father son and holy spirit and we believe that the lord jesus christ who was god himself came down upon the earth and went to the cross for our sake that should be enough to bind all of us together and lord we pray that leaving our so-called distinctiveness must aside, we may join hands, O Lord, with all other Christians, so that the beautiful body of our Lord Jesus Christ may be seen in the world. Yes, Father Lord, we pray that uh, the oneness of us, Lord, we know brings great blessings, that what our Lord Jesus Christ said in John 17, let them be one even as we are one, so the world may know that you have sent me. It's a great responsibility of us, Lord, and, and great blessings flow upon us when there is oneness. And we pray, O Lord, that uh, pastors, O Lord, and evangelists, city by city, may join hands together to glorify your name. Father, Lord, we pray, Master Lord, for everyone who is working in your vineyard, that you may bless them. And Father, help us to stand as your mighty witnesses. In integrity, O Lord, of uh, money, O Lord, morality, Master, so that your name be glorified in and through our lives. As Father Lord, we know that especially when your servants, pastors and others, O Lord, when they fall, the fall is great, O Master Lord, and the noise it creates is much more greater. The damage it causes, O Master Lord, is tremendous. I just want to pray that you will protect your servants, O Master. All those who are working, O Lord, to bring others into the kingdom, be it uh, special ministries, be it uh, some churches, O Lord, be it some pastors, O Master, Lord, we pray missionaries, O Master, we pray, O Lord, that you bless each one of them. And Father, Lord, we pray that you give them strength, especially in this time in our own country, it's so difficult to ask, Lord, to be able to share the gospel. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will give us a discernment, give discernment to your servants to go out, O oh Lord, and give your word and bring in the harvest. There are so many other ministries, O oh Lord, that can be started in this uh, city and elsewhere, O oh Master, based on your word, which is missing, be it uh, visiting... Uh, the prisons of Master, visiting hospitals, taking care of those who are uh, hungry and thirsty and naked. Yes, Lord, that is what you told your disciples in uh, Matthew chapter 25. In the context of your second coming, you said, these are the things I will look for from my people. And Lord, we pray that uh, 
all these things the lord need to be restarted working among the prostitutes or working among the sick taking care of them taking care of the vulnerable widows and the fatherless the orphans yes lord time and again your word tells us this and help us not to neglect that of father yes lord we pray that even as the lord jesus christ gave the example of the good samaritan we may be good samaritans of master coming out of our comfort zone taking care of those in need and taking care of them selflessly o lord whether they accept the gospel or not master is what they have to see we we need to see o god that we need to take care of the needs father lord we pray this time that uh, you will bless us most lord this church that you have given us the ministry you have given us as city light fellowship shama fellowship I ask your blessings upon it pray most lord that you will bless the english church even as we see it even today in dire states help us to know how to take it forward you are not a god of confusion you are a god of order you are a god of clarity and make it clear to us lord what we need to do what is your will o lord for this church it's uh, we ought to do that o father father lord we commit to uh, all of us who are here this morning and many o lord who have not come pray for them we do not know the reasons o lord if it's carelessness callousness rebuke them o god we pray lord we pray that you will act in them discipline them Yes, Lord, your word says you discipline people, Lord. As, as a father disciplines the child, so also you discipline for their own good. Yes, Lord, so that they may understand, Lord, the importance of the church, Lord, importance of worshiping you every Sunday morning, the privilege of worshiping you, Lord, the uh, need of worshiping you, Lord. Yes, Father, and you may bring all of them. many outside your kingdom o lord we want to see them coming into thy kingdom I ask you to bless us most lord the uh, bible school that we run thank you for bringing us a lord to this time where we go to the last two months of our training last one and a half month god help us to complete it and uh, thank you that uh, you helped a lord those who are there to be built up I ask your blessings upon them even as they go out into the field that you will give them grace to be able to stand the lord as a witness and to plant new churches the other work that we do o lord ask your blessings upon all of that ask your blessings of lord upon shama fellowship also lord the pastor who is not uh, to well ask you lord to reach out to him and uh, heal him of that uh, broken arm that he has he has we pray most lord for uh, your grace lord upon uh, all that we are doing our must glorify your name in and through us as father lord we pray that you will provide all our needs our physical financial spiritual all the needs lord of this church this ministry we just put in thy hands of father lead us and guide us is our prayer father lord we ask this all in most precious name of the lord and our savior jesus christ who taught us to pray our father who art in heaven Lord be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen all right we read from the bible once again uh, the gospel reading is taken from uh, luke chapter 18 verses 1 to 8 Luke chapter 18 and verses 1 to 8 a very well known uh, reading the parable of the persistent widow the parable of the persistent widow and it reads then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up he said in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared god nor cared about men and there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with plea grant me justice against my adversary for some time he refused but finally he said to himself even though i don't fear god nor care about men 
Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his holy word. A very warm welcome, my dear friends, to this worship service. Welcome all of you in the most precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, we uh, continue having our service next Sunday also, that is uh, uh, at 9 o'clock, and each one of you is invited for the same. Uh, there will be no service on the 30th of the month. That is not uh, the coming Sunday, but the Sunday after that, the last Sunday of the month, 30th of October, that Sunday we will not be having a physical service. We may have an online service, uh, but we will not be having a physical service on that particular day. So we may just keep that in mind. I'm announcing this a little ahead of time uh, so that uh, we know that on that day we do not have a service. All right, we are going to sing one hymn at this time, even as we bring our offerings unto the Lord. We'll remain seated even as we sing this hymn. Hymn number 226, hymn number 226. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to her. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Father, 
Father Lord, we thank you and praise you, Master God, for this uh, time and for all the blessings you have given us and little that we brought to you from that. We ask you to bless it and use it, Lord, for the extension of your kingdom. Even as we turn to your word, we pray that your word may come alive to us, we may grow in your word, O Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Right, today's uh, sermon has been titled Sustaining Faith Through Persistent Prayer. Sustaining Faith Through Persistent Prayer. Based very much on the Gospel reading for today, Luke chapter 18 and verses 1 to 8. A very well known uh, parable of our Lord Jesus Christ of the persistent widow. Now this uh, parable, if you see, was said in the context of uh, the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ. If you see the previous passage, uh, the coming of the kingdom of God, that's all about the second coming of the, of the coming of Christ. And uh, even as we wait for the second coming, right? We, uh, from the time that we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we uh, come into his kingdom become part of his kingdom, part of his family. Uh, but then we await the consummation of uh, this uh, kingdom, the consummation of our, uh, of our uh, salvation, the, seeing the fullness of the salvation. And that is what we'll see in this, at the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, in between this time, uh, we still have to live in this world. And so we live as sheep among wolves. We live in a world system, my dear friends, which is against uh, the way we live or we are supposed to live. Our faith, my dear friends, is uh, questioned at times and we may be persecuted. We would be persecuted. In fact, in uh, 2 Timothy, in chapter 3, uh, Paul warns uh, Timothy that uh, the, uh, your, because of your faith, because of your life, you will be persecuted. In short, my dear friends, we live as pilgrims in this world or as uh, Peter says, uh, we live as strangers in this world. So, uh, living in constant tension with the world, my dear friends, our faith at times may take a beating. What is it that will uphold our faith, my dear friends, even when things go out of hand? Because things may go out of hand. God has not promised us uh, a bed of roses. God has not promised us uh, everything so-called good, my dear friends. There will be times when things go out of hand, things go bad. And we will feel as if God is not watching. God is not there with us. He is not interested. And uh, Jesus tells my dear friend that... Uh, if you are persistent in your prayer, you will be able to hold on to your faith. All right? He links up our faith with our uh, prayer life. Or he links up our prayer life with our faith. If you see verse 1, he is uh, there speaking of uh, praying and not giving up. But how does he end this particular parable? He says, when the Son of Man comes, however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Alright, so there is a connection, my dear friends, between our faith and prayer. Alright, and uh, this is what we what would like to see. And before we go on to understand what Jesus, uh, Jesus is saying here, we need to understand, my dear friends, what Jesus means by persistence. Because that's, that's the key in this particular passage. Persistence. And persistence, my dear friends, is, uh, it can be defined in many ways, holding on with all our strength and not letting go. Just doing things, you know, time and again. You see, if you see many of our athletes, many of our cricketers, or uh, even those uh, who are in other sports, you would see that they have come up to a level in their sports because of their persistence. Right? I was uh, listening to uh, an interview by Mithali Raj. Mithali Raj is one of those very 
uh, I would say she is one of those beacons of uh, Indians uh, women cricket just retired but her mother said that every day morning whether she was playing or not playing she would take a bat and go to the cricket field she needed to feel or get a feel of the cricket field and that's persistence every day morning without fail and if you speak with any of these people who are in any sports they would say we have a discipline in life every day morning we do this and that's what persistence is all about and if you if we uh, have to take an example from the bible what better example my dear friends than uh, jacob in uh, genesis chapter 32 holding on to god not letting go of god until god blessed him and we know the circumstances my dear friends under what under which this uh, happened uh, he had gone to Laban, his uh, uncle, stayed there for quite some time and become prosperous, got married to both his daughters and at some point of time he felt he should leave that place. So without telling Laban, he took his wife, his wives and his children and he just went away from there. And when Laban came to know about this, uh, he went after him and uh, caught up with him. Uh, and there was reconciliation among uh, the two. But then, after Laban had left, you know, there was another trouble that was uh, ahead of him, uh, ahead of him, another danger that was ahead of him, and that was his brother Esau. We are aware that uh, Jacob had cheated Esau at least twice, and now that when he heard that uh, Esau is uh, coming, uh, he was afraid for his life, my dear friends. He was afraid of what Esau would uh, do. So what does he do? He sends him gifts to pacify him. He sends his servants with a lot of gifts, a lot of cattle and his uh, servants come back and tell him that uh, Esau is coming with more than 400 men to meet him. And Jacob, Jacob is really afraid. So he sends my dear friends his possessions, his concubines and some of their children ahead of him and ultimately even sends his wives and his children ahead of him thinking that looking at all these things or looking at all these people, uh, Esau would not harm him. And then we are told, my dear friends, in verse 24, we uh, read uh, Genesis chapter 32, just open to that, and uh, we read from verse 22 onward, but see in verse 30, uh, th uh, 24, what does it say? The first part of verse uh, 24, it says, so Jacob was left alone. Jacob was left alone. Now, uh, I believe, my dear friends, the author is trying to tell us, it's just not, he's not talking of uh, being physically alone only. It's, it's a kind of loneliness, my dear friends, when you know that everything is now over. That's, that's what it means to be alone. Jacob knew, my dear friends, the, that now he had come to the end of his line. Everything was over. There was nothing left. Uh, we also know that uh, Jacob was a uh, street smart man. But he knew now that his ingenuity, his street uh, smartness by which he had accumulated all the things that he had had, uh, everything was just coming to an end. And he knew that he just could not do anything. It is there, my dear friends, that God met him. And it is not surprising that, that God met him in such circumstances and God meets us also in such circumstances because these are the moments when we have shed all that has blinded us. Our ego, our pride, uh, which may be our education, our money, whatever uh, is there with us, that has come between us and God to some extent. Everything is gone. It is there that we open our eyes to see complete reliance, complete trust on God. We learn to put our complete trust on God at that time. And Jacob here was stripped completely bare and uh, knowing that uh, there was nothing to sustain him, he, he puts his total faith, my dear friends, in God, uh, asking God to sustain him. 
because he knew that if, if there is one person who could sustain him, who could take care of him, that is God. And that is why, if you see uh, in verse 24, the second part of verse uh, uh, 24 of uh, Genesis 32, it says, He wrestled with God till daybreak. He was left all alone and he wrestled with God till daybreak. Right? And he received the blessing from God. And what is the blessing that he received? He, his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. To Israel. Jacob means the deceiver. He was, it was changed to Israel, the man who struggled with God. You know, and uh, uh, this aspect, his name, the change of his name, all right? and also the fact that he had got a limp. Right? God touched that tendon uh, and he got a limp. Both these things would remind him of the struggle that he had with God and uh, it would remind him that he needed to rely upon God all the time. Uh, what got him blessing, my dear friends? It was his persistence. It was his persistence. If you see uh, verse 26 of chapter 32 and the second part of verse uh, uh, 26, what do you see there? But, but Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I will not let you go unless you bless me. This, my dear friends, is persistence. It is virtually holding on to God and not letting Him go because you know that your life depends upon it. Now, this is the kind of persistence that Jesus is talking about when He tells His disciples that they need to continually pray and not give up. And in trying to explain this very aspect, that you need to continually pray, not give up on praying, Jesus gives this particular parable of a widow who comes uh, to pester a judge so much that because of the pestering, he gives in to her. Now, widows, my dear friends, at those times were very, very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. And that is why the two categories of people that God always tells us to take care of is widows and the fatherless, widows and fatherless, orphans, two vulnerable uh, group of people. The girls in those times were married very early, maybe 14, 15 or even before that. And uh, they got their children maybe by 18. And if their husbands died at that particular time, uh, these young women were left absolutely vulnerable. No means of support. They would not be able to find any work and they would not know how to bring up even their children. Uh, and this widow, my dear friends, she knew her desperate condition. She knew that uh, there, was, there was no way that she was going to get help, uh, help of any kind from anywhere. And that is why she now comes to the judge. She has a dispute. It says a dispute with the adversary. We do not know. Probably it was a property dispute. We don't know. Probably, you know, the husband's uh, brother or someone had taken a property or something. And she knew that unless she spoke up, unless she went to the judge and she asked for justice, she would not be able to get it. And if she did not get justice, she knew also that she would not be able to survive. She knew that very well. And that is why. What does she do? She goes, uh, uh, she approaches the judge, my dear friends, to help her. We do not know what kind of judicial system there was at that particular point of time. Some say that it was not like what it was uh, today. It was probably the king or the governor who gave uh, justice. And uh, this man was only a very influential man who could go and influence this, uh, uh, the governor or king. We do not know this, my dear friends. Even if he was of that kind or if you are a judge, he was uh, one, my dear friends, who uh, could help this woman. That's, that's important. And uh, what, do we, what do we come to know about this uh, person? If you see verse 2 of uh, Luke chapter 18, it says, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. That was his uh, nature. That was his character. That was who he was. Uh, when we say that he did not fear God, Probably the, Jesus Christ is trying to tell us that uh, uh, he was a man who was prone to corruption. Right? He was a corrupt man. Okay? Uh, that, that's what the Bible says. You know, 
it is those who do not know god you know who do not walk in the path of god they become corrupt you see they have no restraining power of god so he was probably a corrupt man he said does not care about men that means he did not care about his reputation what would men say about me right when uh, when they know that i am taking bribes and i am a corrupt man what will men say about me you know so he did not care about that also and we are away my dear friends people who live that kind of life uh, they openly live that kind of life and they don't care of what people say because their aim in life my dear friends is to make money by any means that that's their aim whatever happens i need money and uh, what what would such a man give to a widow who had nothing to give him this widow as i said vulnerable uh, having no means of support uh, maybe no work what could she give him and so uh, the question that would come to his mind is why should i help this woman what am i going to really get if i am going to help this woman so the chances of this woman getting any justice from this man even the women the widow knew it my dear friends was absolutely zero she knew it is not possible looking at the nature of this man that i'll ever get justice from this man she knew it very well and yet my dear friends the parable says that she persisted she persisted she kept on going my dear friends she kept on coming back and uh, so what happened it says he gave in he gave in and what is the reason for giving in is given in verse 4 and 5 it says for some time he refused but finally he said to himself even though i don't fear god and care about men yet because this widow keeps bothering me i will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming this man my dear friends gives in to her persistence because he says if i don't do it i'll get weighed out by her coming he didn't care about the woman he didn't care about the widow he didn't care whether she got justice or not he cared even about himself he said if uh, she keeps coming you know i'll get i'll get worn out by her coming what does this word worn out mean uh the word worn out my dear friends uh, it indicates something like a black eye if you ever seen a boxing match and uh, you would know when a person gets a black eye it's when the opponent keeps on hitting at that very place time and again time and again he would hit at just one place you know maybe the left eye or the right eye because he knows that uh, uh, that is going to wear out that person he gets a black eye and so and that's exactly what this judge is saying that uh, if i don't give justice to this widow i'll get a black eye it will wear me out so because of my own self because i don't want to be worn out i'll give her justice and then jesus gives the meaning of this parable in verse 7 and this verse 7 is important and what is verse 7 say it says and will not god bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night will he keep coming uh, will he keep putting them off i tell you he will see that they get justice and quickly okay uh, verse 8a also uh, it says what jesus is making my dear friends this is important because many a times this uh, just reading this parable is a little confusing jesus is making a positive point by giving a negative example what he's saying my dear friends is that if an unjust judge who is corrupt one who does not want to give justice decides to give justice because of the persistence of the widow will not a good god to whom we belong and who is a just god uh will he not give justice to his children will he not act on them or for them if uh, uh they call on him persistently let me just explain this once again i want you to see the comparison my dear friends uh it's not a direct comparison you know god is like the judge 
completely. That's, that's not what it says. It's a different kind of a comparison here. You know, on one hand you see there's an unjust judge. On the other hand is a just God. You know, the unjust judge is corrupt. Okay. The uh, God that you worship is good. The widow is not related to him. Okay. But we are, we belong to God. And if in such a case, the fact that he's unjust, the fact that he is corrupt, the widow does not belong to him, does not, is not related to him. In spite of that, he acts on her behalf. He acts for the widow. You know, if uh, uh, that is the case, will not a just God, will not a good God, will not a God to whom we belong, who belongs to us, will he keep uh, 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 injustice away from us? Will he not act on our behalf? If we call on him, him persistently. That's the point that Jesus Christ is making. God certainly acts, my dear friends, when we call on him persistently. And persistently, my dear friends, is, uh, is not like brushing our teeth in the morning and evening. It is, it is being persistent. Uh, we need to pray in desperation like Jacob we need to pray as if our life depended on it and that's the kind of prayer my dear friends that God wants from us no more examples from uh, extra biblical literature uh, that we get about such prayer warriors we have James who is called James the Just who is the brother of Jesus Christ who also wrote the letter of James and uh, he believed in the power of prayer and uh, he would kneel down in intercession and pray for long hours, such a long hours that his knees became calloused and uh, like a camel my dear friends and he was known as a saint with camel's knees, a saint with camel's knees, that's the extent of uh, his prayer life. Monica, the mother of Augustine, she prayed, my dear friends, for long hours and for many, many years, persistently for his son Augustine, because Augustine was of a wayward character. And, uh, but we believe, my dear friends, that it is because of the prayers of uh, his mother that uh, we see, uh, uh, we see Augustine became one of the fathers of, uh, I would say, one of the pioneers, you know, uh, of uh, Christianity. David Livingston, he spent his life uh, uh, in the jungles of Africa, uh, facing terrible problems. His, he had his family with him, his, uh, his daughter died, he sent his wife back, uh, uh, I think, to England, and then uh, he traveled alone in the jungles of Africa, trying to give the word of God and the kind of problems that he faced. He was once bitten by a lion, he injured his arm, while he was traveling in the jungle, a uh, branch, my dear friends, uh, that damaged his eye. In the later part of his life, he was so weak that he had to be carried by the native. And one evening, even as he was carried back to his hut, he told the native to just leave him near his bed. And the next day morning, they found him on his knees in a position of prayer, dead. He had died praying on his knees. Right, so that's the kind of uh, prayer life that God wants from you and me. What is prayer? What do you understand by the word prayer? We usually think of prayer as, uh, as communication with God, speaking with God. But it's more than that. Prayer, my dear friends, is, uh, is the place where we throw ourselves on God completely. It's, it's, uh, we are putting ourselves uh, in, a, in a place of helplessness or hopelessness and uh, throwing ourselves totally on God. When Hannah prayed, she knew that if God did not act, nothing would happen in her life. Right? So her prayer was uh, so powerful. Uh, the way she was praying, completely lost, that uh, even Eli thought that she was drunk. 
Right? So, uh, that's the kind of prayer that we want. Psalms 121 that we read, you know, is a prayer of that kind. You know, here is a God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. He will not harm me, let harm come by day or night. He is the one who will take care of me. Where should I look uh, for help? You know, that's how the psalmist starts and says that I look uh, to the God of the hills and the God of the heavens. He, you know, he is the one who will take care of me. That's the kind of prayer, my dear friends, that we should be having. That's the kind of, and that's the kind of prayer, my dear friends, that sustains our faith. Prayer, that's the kind of faith that sustains our faith. You know, it's very interesting that Jesus ends this particular parable by saying, however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will you find faith on the earth? There is a connection, my dear friends, between uh, our faith and our prayer life. Our prayer life shows our faith. Our faith, it, uh, uh, it I would say, inspires us to, uh, to rely upon God and be in persistent prayer. What do you mean by faith? Right? The Bible says if you have faith as uh, small as a mustard seed, you can move uh, mountains. He's, Jesus is not talking, my dear friends, of uh, degrees of faith. You can either have faith or not have faith. All right? There cannot be any in-between kind of uh, situation. But what is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 defines what faith is. It says it's uh, being sure. Hmm? Uh, that's the word that is used there. Being sure of what we hope for and being certain of what we do not see. What we do not see, we are certain of that. How can we be certain, my dear friends, of something that we do not see? I would like you to turn with me for a very short time uh, to Second Timothy that we read and see what uh, Paul is telling uh, Timothy uh, in the first few verses that we read there. Chapter 3 and verses 14 and uh, 15. Uh, this is how his faith is sustained, you know, uh, the first thing. He says, but for you, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. That means be strong in faith. That's what he's telling him. Because you know those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Now this is very, very important. How did Timothy, my dear friends, get his faith? What was his faith based on? Uh, Paul tells him two things. He says, you know from whom you have got it. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, earlier, he, if you see verse 10, he says, you have uh, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, suffering. As he said, you have seen me. Okay. So looking at me, you should be strong in faith. That's number one. But here in these verses, he says, you know from whom you've got it. You've got it from your mother and you've got it from your grandmother. Okay. And how have they built your faith? It says, from infancy, they have taught you the holy scriptures. What are the holy scriptures that he's talking about? He's talking about the Old Testament. They've taught you what is there in the Old Testament. And what is the Old Testament all about? The Old, the Old Testament is all about two things. Number one is the standard of God, the standard of God, the commandments of God. All right. And, and uh, knowing the commandments of God, it points you, my dear friends, you know, seeing the commandments of God, you know, and knowing that you're not able to keep it. Right? When uh, Joshua he spoke to the Israelites. He says, uh, remember that the God that you worship is a jealous God. And uh, will you be able to follow his laws? Because if you don't, you are going to get in trouble. And what did the people say? Yes. Yes. That was a confidence they had on their own selves. Okay. And But as time went by, we know the history of Israel. The whole of the New Testament or the Old Testament is all about how Israel failed God. They were not able to keep the commandments of God. But that is not how the Old Testament ends. You know, or because 
everywhere in the old testament god also showed the coming of the messiah he showed them i am giving you these commandments try to keep it and when they were not able to keep it god said i will send you a savior i will send you a savior so the old testament points my dear friends to the coming of the messiah or the coming of the savior and so timothy who was so strong in the old testament because of the teaching that he had received from his mother and grandmother when jesus came and he showed the signs of the messiah he was very readily ready to accept him as the savior what does this mean my dear friends about uh, the faith of uh, timothy it had a foundation it was not on the spur of the moment as many nowadays you know people give altar calls people don't really understand uh, do you accept jesus christ and they say yes yes we do we do why what who is jesus you know the foundation of uh, timothy was very very strong my dear friends you know and uh, uh, when you have this foundation how do you build on that foundation how do you become strong in your faith there are two things that we need to remember here you know if you see verse uh, 16 verse 16 and 17 it says all scripture is god breathed or god breathed and useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of god may be thoroughly equipped for every good work hmm? that's what the word of god is meant for it is meant for uh, teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness that is it is meant to build your faith that's what paul is saying the word of god is meant to build your faith and uh, he says if you if you really study the word of god you know uh, with all your heart and mind meditate on it your faith is going to be built up you will learn to have trust in god that's one way to build up your faith the second my dear friends is uh, through prayer it is through prayer that your faith is built up uh soren kokegard a kick kickegard that's what he's called the danish theologian says faith is like trust faith as trust is like floating in an ocean in a deep ocean if you struggle and are tensed up you will sink if you relax and trust you will float and uh, that is what prayer does to us prayer helps us to put ourselves totally on on god to trust him once our faith is built up on the word of god once the, when our faith is built up my dear friends once we have a foundation and it is built up on the word of god the, the way it is sustained is by persistent prayer and prayer as i said is totally putting ourselves in uh, in the in the arms of god now i hope my dear friends you understood that faith as trust faith as trust will become active through our prayers it is through our prayers that our faith becomes active and even as we are persistent in prayer as we throw ourselves desperately on the lord that is where our faith is sustained and we will be able to go forward you leave praying my dear friends and you will sink if you leave praying you will sink so would it uh, would it not be uh, would it be wrong my dear friends to say that persistence in prayer first of all requires faith right persistence in prayer requires faith persistent in prayer tests your faith also right persistence in prayer molds your faith and lastly persistence in prayer strengthens your faith to be persistent in uh, in uh, prayer it requires faith it tests your faith it molds your faith and it strengthens your faith pray my dear friends is that greatest privilege the greatest privilege that god has given us where we can 
learn where we where we can converse with not only converse with God or where we can just learn to rely upon Him completely. May the Lord really help us to use our prayer life uh, to build our faith, so that when the Son of Man comes, He may not find uh, that our faith is that we do not have faith. Let's bow down and say prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this uh, time they get, you gave us and the time, Lord, to study your word. And Father Lord, we pray that you will continue to help us to not only study your word, but also, Lord, to uh, be persistent in our prayer life. If an unjust judge, master, uh, can, uh, uh, can give in a lot to a widow who is not related to her, so much more a just judge, O Lord, a good God, uh, a good, uh, a just God can give us so much when we are persistent in our asking Him about it. Yes, Lord, help us not to give up, O Lord, on anything, to go forward to glorify Your name, because we know that You have great things in store for us. Help us not, O Lord, to stop short, O Lord, of... Uh, of gaining those good things you have for us, God. Towards this end, we commit ourselves in thy almighty arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing the concluding hymn for today. We rise to our feet and sing the same hymn number 494. 494. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice and told thy love to me, but I long for rising the arms of faith and be closer drawn to the 494. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer Lord, to the cross where Thou hast done. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the precious bleeding Son. Consecrate me now to Thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding sign. Oh, the pure delight of a single love that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer, and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to that precious bleeding sign. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed.
blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to Thy precious bleeding side. Yes, Father Lord, we thank and praise the Lord for this time that You give us. Once again, I ask, Lord, just to praise and worship you and to receive your blessings. Lord, we pray that you will help us to uh, imbibe what we, you have taught us today, Lord, in our lives, that your name be glorified in and through us. Even as we depart, Lord, from here, we pray that you will be with us, bless us, Lord. Let the whole week be a blessed one where we are able to enjoy your presence, oh Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us now and forevermore. Amen.